it had been a pretty dreary and overcast day, but just like right as we were about to step over officially into Idaho, the sun has come out and it's shining. So I'm gonna take that as a good positive sign that uh, Idaho is gonna be a good state. I get for bragging about it being sunny <laughs> right after crossing Idaho. I'm about 12 miles from Max Inn, which is where we're actually aiming to get to tomorrow. It's like the first legit town since, well, Dubois, I guess. Yeah, before Yellowstone. So, yeah, I'm 12 miles from there right now. So I'm kind of like, hmm, not worth uh, weathering this storm while hiking because either way I'm gonna get there at a decent time tomorrow. Aaron is a little behind. I'm not exactly sure where he's at. I sent him a message on the inReach, but there's a water source in a quarter of a mile. So I think I'm gonna get there and set up. Ooh, that thunder does not sound good at all. things I get a hole in my sleeping pad must have been a rock or a piece of gravel that sliced it dead blast normally I kind of check the area that I'm gonna set my tent up and uh, I can't sleep if I sleep on one of the uh, foam pads so luckily I have a repair kit for my sleeping pad so I highly recommend that if you're gonna have an inflatable sleeping pad then you carry uh, this is a thermo rest repair kit for my sleeping pad. It's certainly not perfect because of the moisture in the air it's kind of damp but hopefully hopefully it'll hold. Do you see any blue skies or it's just just getting light? You'll get your tent set up and then it'll turn blue and then we'll tear down and then it'll storm again. Now the sun's shining. It didn't look like it was gonna come back out. Well, it's a little dirty, but uh, it held all night, despite having a little bit of trouble getting it to stick, so, yay! I had into town today, pretty excited to see if I can get some Epsom salts to soak my toes and real food and all of that, but I'm pretty excited. I'm getting to town early and, you know, I can do some chores and then I can just lay up and rest my toes, so, I thought. Uh, unfortunately, I have packages at the post office. That's not the unfortunate part. Um, the unfortunate part is they are not at the post office that 
I'm walking by there at a post office three miles down the highway. Apparently the small area of Island Park, Idaho has two post offices, two, for a little bitty place. So my mistake, I just never imagined in my wildest dreams that there would be uh, more than one post office, but alas, there is. So now I have to deal with the logistics of hitchhiking down there and hitchhiking back and all of that. And there's, I'm pretty sure no taxi service around here or anything like that. So, so much for having free time today. It will be spent trying to rescue my packages from the wrong post office. A bunch of birds. Hey, God, mighty Jesus. That's what that was. <laughs> so, Aaron and I <laughs> are sitting on this long road walk and taking a break, and uh, <laughs> we hear this awful racket up in the bush. <laughs> and he's like, is that a cat? And I'm like, I think it's a bird. And then it just sounded like something fighting. And then like the bushes started moving. And these two, I think those were, um. Weasels? Yeah, weasels. <laughs> uh, come rolling out of the bushes and I yelled at them for fighting. Cause it's like my natural instinct. Like, you know, dogs fighting, you holler. But anyway, <laughs> it scared the crap out of us. <laughs> well, it scared me. Did it scare well, you, scared, you? You scared them. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a mountain back there. A mountain or a valley or, or something over there. Yesterday when we were leaving Max Inn slash Sawtell Resort area, I noticed that uh, it's pretty smoky. Uh, there were some mountains in the distance. I could see the outline but couldn't quite see them very well. And uh, I know that there are a couple closures ahead north of Lima somewhere. Um, so I think we're gonna meet Perk in Lima and probably construct our own alternate kind of deal. He was talking about doing it through Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest. That way we're not just like on a highway or something like that. That way we get to enjoy some wilderness area. This area begins a three and a half mile bushwhack and uh, I can kind of see a faint path ahead of me. <laughs> Wondering if you can. Um, I can see some footprints and just where, yeah, right there, where like the ground's just a little chewed up. But uh, anyway, apparently folks end up messing up royally and end up in a boggy, marshy area. So we're supposed to stay high and to the right, I guess, of this uh, little creek down here that must have, ooh, must have more water that feeds it. Apparently, if you end up down in that little draw, kind of corralled by either side, it's a mess and it takes like hours and hours to get through. So ooh, I'm really not looking for a uh, several hour several mile bog marsh waterlogged hike today so <laughs> I'm gonna try to stay up the right way it's just like I said hard to tell because it's bushwhacking and there's no defined path it's a bushwhack. It's a part of this bushwhack. is a bushwhack a briar whack ow <laughs> you know they're both wooly like. <laughs> These look like the little Horton Here's a Who flowers. We think down there is where you don't want to be in that water, but we're still not sure. We're uh, out of the woods, but I think so. I think if you were down there, it'd just be like, well, I'm not climbing up now. I just have to walk in the water because it's pretty high up. Do you see a path?
behold a path through the trees. I was just chatting with some uh, folks on horseback and I reckon they come here a good bit and ride and hunt and stuff like that. And they were out for a little joy ride today and so when I crossed paths with them I was like it looks pretty smoky and he's like oh yeah normally this area is really beautiful and crystal clear and you can just see forever and see more mountains than you can right now and I was like all right it's kind of what I figured but it is what it is though. It's that, it's that time of year it seems like towards the end of uh, the PCT and you know, you know, towards the end of this trail. I certainly didn't expect a whole lot different. It's just everything's gotten green and then gotten hot with the summer, had time to dry out and and now it's just catching on fire. really windy on this ridge. Finally set up and all warm and bundled up after night hiking. It got really windy and we ended up being really exposed until the last mile or so when we dropped down um, on the descent, which is where we're camped now. So luckily the wind is not affecting us here and uh, hopefully it still won't be by the morning time. But after that bushwhack and a couple of decent climbs and a very, very windy night hike, you know, it's been a full day and we only got, uh, 19.1 miles but I consider that a success after the terrain and just the way today went. This is kind of my routine in the morning. I go ahead and pack everything up into its individual baggies. So like I have my electronics bag and my toiletries bag that goes on the outside that has like that's the middle one sunscreen and right now all the stuff to deal with my toe and hand sanitizer baby wipes toilet paper and then I have the one that's got like my baby powder and brush and lotion and you know all the other girl stuff toothbrush toothpaste and then this is my clothes bag and my food bag um which I did have it hung last night, but anyway. Um, and then this is stuff that goes like on the outside of the pack. That little charger I'm going to put in my hip belt pocket. And then my cold coffee. Because I'm out of fuel. And uh, my water bottle there. But anyway, in my tent I go ahead and I pack up my sleeping bag. And my uh, sleeping pad in there. And then I'll go ahead and get out. Because normally I either put my clothes bag or my tent index. Now if it was raining, I would pack all that stuff in here and probably attach my tent to the little loops on the outside of my pack. So that's, that's what I would do if it were actually pouring right now, but it's not. So I'm going to do it like normal. today is going to be one of those the track outline and gut hook the navigational app that I use and the actual trail do not align days <laughs> um, right now I am not on the defined trail in gut hooks but I am seeing you know CDT trail markers so I always look ahead at the waypoints for the day while I'm in my tent in the morning and I notice that there are a few places that this will probably happen today. So, and then whenever I find myself frustrated about stuff like that, I think, imagine doing this in the 80s when there was no GPS app on my smartphone to help me navigate. So, you know, I'm pretty fortunate for the technology that we have to use and, uh, you know, really can't complain because 98% of the time, 
gut hooks is correct and is a very useful tool. Playing hide and seek with the trail. The obvious footpath stop, so. <laughs> hmm. It's been staying on the ridge though, so that's what I'm gonna do. That scared the crap out of me. I knew I heard something in the woods and I saw something big lurking there. You scared me. There's a marker. And it says trail with a torn up CDG sticker. All right. These things remind me of like something you would, you know, play a xylophone with. <laughs> and they're like, I mean, they got some, you know, force behind them whenever I run into them and stuff or knock them with my hands. But yeah, I feel like I should be playing some kind of instrument with that. These are a little dried out, but I will take it. Yes, jackpot. So apparently the trail is washed out if you continue around this certain area. So we had to bushwhack over the saddle I'm coming to the top of right now. Through all this sagebrush, Aaron came up and over, but I didn't know where he went. Oh, there he is. He blended into the trees. You see it? Sweet! Sweet! Would you look at that? Hey oh, and there's a sign. And there's a cloud. I finished my antibiotic yesterday. And surprise, my toes are not magically better. However, it did hold me over till now. My toes haven't rotted off. So I'm hoping that in Lima or surrounding area, there's gonna be an emergency room, podiatrist, somebody that could cut these toenails out. I was hoping that it would just hold off until Canada, but I just don't think so. They still look pretty rough. This tree says, ah! <laughs> there's Aaron laying down on the job. Well, on your water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you really are like a pretzel up in that yeah. water source. <laughs> it was getting pretty dark and started raining, so we went ahead and set up in a jungle. Aaron's having some troubles. I had troubles. I'm on a sloping ground and literally in the weeds, but it's like this all around as far as the eye can see. It is raining again, and I have a contraption thing going here. Last night, I woke up and was like, why are my feet wet? And I think I had pushed the bathtub floor down there out, potentially past the, the whatever you want to call it, the wall of the tent at some point, and uh, there was a big puddle in that corner down there. So my toe box of my sleeping bag was wet, so to keep it from happening more I put this around it because there was a big puddle down there so it's still pretty wet um, but I think this helped a little bit helped keep the water warm at least when my body heated it up and I shoved my raincoat I wrapped it around my feet and stuck it down in there so that they would stay kind of dry and warm even though it was wet and I was able to go back to sleep like I stayed warm enough but now it's raining outside and I don't reckon I'm going to be able to dry it out at all today because I think it's going to be raining all day. I'm about to brave the storm and today is my first day trying out these sweet 
Showa work gloves over my possum down gloves because it's cold out there. And just like that, the sun decided to start shining. There are some dark clouds still back in that area, but hopefully we'll at least get a decent break from the weather. I will say though, the rain definitely helps the views. I mean, sure, it could be a little foggy and stuff like that, but just knocking that smoke out of the air and clearing things up. I mean, it will be a much prettier walk today if it does stay clear. And also, the rain always makes the greenery so much more vibrant. So I fuss about the, the rain when it's falling, but then, you know, I really hope that there aren't more wildfires. <laughs> and the best way to prevent that is some, some rain and even some snow. Oh look, it's a little bug water dish. Or it's dead in there and it drowned, I don't know. <laughs> it's like birdie fireworks from the grass. <laughs> Look at all of those colors. So pretty. I got some good news. I have a podiatrist appointment in Anaconda on Thursday. So, I'm gonna go ahead and in there. Oh, that feels great on the toenails. Um, and they said that they can go ahead and cut them out. So, I'm excited. Hopefully, I won't have to be laid up for more than a day or so. All right, we have reached the dirt road that will take us to the service road that will take us to Lima. And so begins our self-made alternate around the fire closures. I've got about, I think 29 miles to go to get to Lima and I will be reunited with Perk there and Kyle's waiting on me there with Katana. I reckon we'll sit down and piece together this homemade alternate. That's one of my favorite things about this trail is that it's very much, you know, choose your own adventure. Like I've mentioned before, this one, it's like, well, as long as you're within 50 miles of the divide, you know, do your thing. So it's kind of exciting just to, just to create your own adventure. I don't know, it's, it feels very well adventurous. Well, I'll tell you the worst part of a shot right here is the fluid going in. Yeah. But how are you doing? Great. You're doing, okay. doing a good job. My sister texted me and she was like, how long are you taking off before, you know, you start back to let your toes heal up? And I was like, well, I'm actually starting back hiking today because the snow in Canada is not going to wait for a wimp. <laughs> 